Hi everyone, happy to see you today at our webinar. And first of all, let's do a quick sound check. Could you please let me know in the chat if you hear me okay and if you can see the screen as well as the presenter's video? Yes. Okay, it seems that you can hear and see us. So let's begin our webinar. Hi everyone, welcome to the iSpring webinar series where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSprint tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. My name is Nadia. I'm a community manager at iSprint, and I will be the moderator for today's session. And today's webinar is dedicated to graphic design in e-learning. To understand this topic, I invited my colleague from the tech support department, Irene. Hi, Irina. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing fine. Thank you so much. How do you? I'm feeling great. I'm very excited about today's presentation. And we'll also have Paulina with us today. She is a web and graphic designer in our marketing team, and she'll be happy to cover your design-related questions in the chat. And at this point, let me pass the mic over to Arena to start the presentation. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. I'm super happy to see you here. Let's start our webinar. So let me stop sharing the camera so that we can only see my presentation. Uh, my name is Irina and I'm the technical support team lead at iSpring and I will be presenting for you today. Did you know that it's possible to build eye-catching and effective training courses even if you don't have a designer on your team? In our today's webinar, we will learn how you can easily enhance your existing materials by applying the basics of graphic design. We will be happy to share practical tips and tricks that will allow you to create outstanding and functional e-learning courses that your students will enjoy. And also, today we are going to have an extremely interactive session. I need your participation to get the most out of this webinar. So please be ready to be active in the chat. And as already Nadia mentioned, uh, we have a colleague from our design team. Her name is Paulina, and she will be happy to answer any of your questions that you are having regarding design. Let's start with the outline of our webinar. Today, we will present the basic principles of graphic design. Then, uh, we will show how to apply them to e-learning courses. Next, we will point out common mistakes in online course design. And finally, we will see how to improve an actual course. Okay, let's get down to business. During this session, we will do the following. First, we will show you the before. Next, we will speak about the design mistakes that we have on a slide of the presentation. Then we will look at the base, how to fix the slide. And finally, we will see the results. All right, now let's start with the first rule of graphic design. The first rule of graphic design is going to be composition. In a good online course, information and design complement each other and help to achieve learning goals. Information on the slide and visual elements work as a single mechanism. They attract and hold the student's attention and help to remember the information better. When all the elements on slides look harmonious, they form a composition. But how do you achieve the perfect balance? Let's look at some practical tips. First, we will speak about the slide format. In PowerPoint, there are two slide formats. The first one is 4 by 3, and the second one is 16 by 9. 4 by 3 is a square slide format. It's an old format that was used to show presentations with a video projector. 16 by 9 is a rectangular slide format. 
It is used for more than laptops and smartphones. All right, now let's look at our first example. That is the slide before. And before I speak about the mistakes that we have on this slide, uh, I want to ask you to send your suggestions in chat on how we can fix the slide to achieve the better result. Please be active in chat and uh, tell me your ideas on how we can change this slide to make it look better for our students. I will give you a couple of minutes so that you can think and send your messages in chat. Okay, I see that we need to relabel the course button to something more intuitive, make the slide lighter, convert the slide to 16 by 9, uh, change text color and size, um, change the brightness of the photo, uh, take image to the edges, then white wires on sides are distracting, that's right, uh, photo should be brighter, then we need to change a course to end the course here, great idea, move the buttons down, uh, show the flames, uh, then we need to make the text larger to make dark background. Uh, okay, we need to keep a good contrast to meet accessibility requirements when you lighten the background, that's right. Uh, then we can add brief description, of course. Okay, just let's just uh, send us two more and then uh, we will continue. So the last one is background image. Uh, must be edited in gradient style so the text is more apparent. Yes, okay, so, so I guess that's enough. Uh, you had uh, perfect ideas on how we can fix this slide. So now I'm going to quickly talk on how we suggest to fix it and then we will see uh, the result slide. All right, so here we have extra spaces on, left, on the left and on the right. You did mention it, it in chat. These white spaces distract users from important information in the middle. Then we also have uh, less space for the elements in the middle. And as a result, we have to place them closer to each other, which is causing visual overload. Okay, now how can we improve this slide? Let's see. Here we simply rescaled it to widescreen, which is 16 by 9. And now it's much easier for a user to pay attention to important information. We no longer have distracting elements and the background looks much more immersive. So do you agree with that? I, I think the slide now looks much better. Okay, perfect. I see that it's, uh, it looks much better now and we can move on. Now let's speak about uh, the second rule. And this rule is given to be the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is based on the perception of the human eye. This means that the image should be imagined as being divided into nine equal parts by two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. And that and important compositional elements must be placed along these lines or on their intersections. You can see the example on the slide. And actually in PowerPoint, uh, there is a feature, it is called grid lines. You can find it under view tab. So if you go to view tab and enable grid lines, you will be able to see the image divided into these parts. And after we finish this session, I will show you uh, how, where you can find this feature. Okay, so we've just talked about the rule of thirds and now let's look at our first example. Okay, now we see the slide and I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. Please submit your suggestions in chat on how can we fix this. Again, I will give you one or two minutes. Please be active. Okay, we need to move the fire extinguisher to the left. We need to put the image closer to the center. We need to realign the image, right? There is too much negative space between items. Too much visual distance between text and image. Yes, uh, that's right. 
Uh, we need to move clue. We need to move objects closer to the center. Correct. Um, okay. Most of you suggest to move uh, text and image closer to the center. It's right. Okay. Uh -huh. Next slide button should be lower to the right corner. Right. There is too much text. Okay. Okay, I guess you were able to find the typo. Sorry, we will definitely fix this. Okay, actually, I think that's enough. Uh, your comments are great. You are all correct. And now we can see, uh, we can look at our first example. So here, uh, you're right. The image is too far to the right. And as a result, we have <clears throat> a large gap between text and image. And it makes it necessary for the student to look at the image for a couple of seconds, which is a lot of time when we are reading. You can actually try it yourself. Just try to read the text and then look at the image and you will notice that it takes uh, a second to move your eye from the text to the image. Okay, uh, but how can we fix this? Let's see. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do is to divide the slide into nine parts according to the rule of thirds. To do this, we need to draw two equally spaced horizontal lines and two equally spaced vertical lines. Let's do that. All right, now when we edit the lines, uh, the lines we can clearly see that the text and the image are in the wrong place. Okay, now let's try to move text and images to the correct position. Perfect, so it's time to remove these lines. They helped us a lot. And we can look at the final output. Now text and image are closer to each other and we don't have distracting empty space between them. It's very easy for the student to start reading and look at the image. Okay, so now we are done with the rule of thirds and we can move on to the next rule. The next rule is given to be the hierarchy of elements. The essence of this method is to draw attention to a particular element through contrast, fonts, size, shape, location, and color. And that is actually a very important rule when you are um, so when you are doing the courses that must be accessible. Okay, <clears throat> now let's move on and look at our example. So uh, when we, if we look at the slide, uh, we will notice that it's very important that the largest and brightest objects attract the most attention. You need to make sure that only the most important elements are highlighted on the slide. And now, when you look at this slide, please, uh, as usual, uh, submit your suggestions on how to fix that in chat. Okay, I'm waiting for your suggestions. Okay, we need to build the title, right? Uh, titles need to stand out. Again, we need to highlight titles. We need to add the bullets. We need to use bold fonts for the header title, right? Okay, so do you have any other suggestions on what we need to, on what we can do on this slide? Okay, uh, we need to underline title and bold font. Mm. We need to move the text above the tutor to the bottom. Uh, we need to change uh, the tutor paragraph and add a photo. I'm not sure that the paragraph below is necessary. Uh, that's a very good point. We need to decide what is the most important and highlight that. Perfect. Uh, so Brandon is saying that image is relevant only to the top half of the text. That's correct. That's definitely correct. Uh -huh. Yes, we can do two slides for top and bottom sections, right? We need to capitalize the letters of the title to make it prominent. And also we need to make the image wider. 
and use the uh, nine parts rule, correct? Yes, we definitely need it for this slide. Okay, uh, you've provided some great suggestions on how we can fix that. And um, let's talk about this slide before we look at the result. So the most important element on the slide is always a heading. On our slide, it's almost the same size as the text, and you've mentioned that in chat. So it's very hard for a student to find where the abstract starts. The next issue is the information itself. Here we have two key points, the course outline and the description of our tutor who will help us during the course. It's very hard for a student to decide which one is more important. So now let's see how we can fix this. First, we will need to put the outline and the information about the tutor on two different slides. This is our new slide with the outline. When we have only one block with important information, we need to make the heading larger. And then we can create more contrast between background and text by adding a dark background and white shape under the text. Now we are directing the student to the block with the text where they will read the heading first and then the description. It will ensure that students perceive the information in the logical order and remember it better. So I think that uh, this slide looks great now and we don't have that here, but we need to add another slide about the tutor where we can definitely add the photo of the tutor. So I want to uh, let me know in chat if you like uh, the first or the second variant more. Okay, so I see that uh, you think that the second one is better. Okay, uh, so there is a question. I don't see the image you are referring to. Uh, actually, I've just meant that we need to separate the slide into two slides, one about the outline and the second one about the tutor. And then when we create a second slide, we can add an image of the tutor, but we're not going to do that today to save time. Okay, so I guess we all agree that the second variant is better and we can move on to the next uh, rule of the course design. And uh, this rule is given to be uh, adding air to the slide. So um, you must not put icons and text too close to each other. They say that design needs to breathe. So the rule uh, is that 20% of the slide must be blank. And now uh, let's look at our example. So this is our before slide. Uh, let's uh, discuss in chat how we can fix this. Okay, we need to do uh, the font smaller. There are too much words. Um, okay, uh, some people seem to like this slide, but it's fine. So this slide is not a disaster. We just need to do a quick fix and it will look better. It's uh, not the worst example of the slide design. Okay, we need to uh, change from half and half to a better proportion of water to text, right? We need to fix the text alignment, put less text. Um, we need to make the text more clear. There, there, are, there is a lot of text. Uh, the picture is good. Uh, perhaps take in inspiration from the previous slide in terms of slide, right? Okay, the S should be capitalized since the F is in the title. Mm -hmm. We need to add bullets. Okay, we need to move the next slide button to the right side. Mm -hmm. We need to crop some of the black background and maybe add a color block behind the text to help it stand out, right? Uh, we can make the picture larger and add less text. Okay, yes, I think that's enough. Uh, we can move on and see. Uh, so first discuss uh, what is wrong with this slide and then we can move on and see the results. So on this slide, the text is too close to the left 
and it's actually quite long. There is a chance that students will never read everything we have here. Next, we have an image that is used to complement the material, but it does not have to take so much space. Okay, so now let's look at the result. On this slide, we have a topic of the chapter in the course. We don't need so much text. Just a short description will work fine. It's very important to work with the text and shorten it, leaving key points only. Next, we need to make the image smaller and move all elements to the center. As you can see, it looks much better now. All right. So uh, that was the last rule of composition and we can move on to the second part of our webinar and talk about typography. I see that you are still submitting your suggestions in chat, that's great. And here we have uh, that we don't need next slide button. Uh, okay, if you have, if you actually, if you are using iSpring player and you already have next and back buttons, you don't need this button at all, because you will have all buttons and all course controls on the player panel. All right, so now let's move on to the second part, as I mentioned, and now we will speak about typography. Typography is a technique of arranging text elements to make written language readable and appealing when displayed. Now let's move on to the first rule of typography. The first rule is given to be to use no more than two different fonts on the slide. There can be up to two fonts in the course, one for the heading and another one for the text body. Let's look at our first example. So, uh, now you see the slide with the fonts issue and please submit your submit suggestions. Okay, Kim is saying that this slide makes her nervous. That's right, I feel the same. <laughs> so, there are too many fonts. Uh, there can be three fonts. Uh, we need to uh, remove cursive, right? Uh, Wooden paper font looks too cartoonish. That's right. That's a very good point. No italics, right? We need to change the font of the description. Uh, the slide looks very distracting and actually does not look professional, right? It's difficult to read. To read, sorry. Uh -huh. The guy is too distracting. Uh, the paragraph needs a different font. The fireman looks angry. <laughs> well, he's actually making us to be attentive. Then um, we need to uh, add the bullets instead of images. And also the picture is not in line with the course. Uh, font, actually I see a very good uh, suggestion. Font should mirror tone of the message. This is a serious topic, so fonts should be more formal, right? That is correct. Okay, so I think that's enough, and now we can uh, move on to discuss on this slide. Actually, you are all right. On this slide, we can see four different fonts, and of course, as a result, it does not look very neat. Also, this font here does not go along with the topic of the course at all. The, this course is on a very serious topic of fire safety, and the font is too curvy and fun. Okay, now what can we do? Let's look at the result. So here we decreased the number of fonts to two, and uh, we selected one font for the headings and another one for the text body. If you're using subheadings, you need to choose the same font as the body text, but larger or bold. Another important rule is to make sure that fonts are easy to read. And here I selected a simple and readable font for my description. Now the slide looks much better. Okay, so I think we are done with this slide where we have the wrong font and uh, we can move on and speak about the second rule. 
The second rule is to add contrast to the text. Okay, uh, before we talk about this rule, I uh, would ask, I will ask you to react in the chat with a, thumb, with a thumb up if you always read a text from the very beginning to the very end. And please put thumb down if you don't. Okay, I see that many of you uh, don't read uh, the whole text and Laura mentioned that it depends on the layout and actually uh, that's the point. Today we are learning how to, um, how to let our students to read the text from the beginning to the end. Okay, uh, we've just, so we can move on and look at our first slide here and speak about the text. Actually, for all of you who uh, wrote it with the thumb down, it's fine because people very rarely read the text from the beginning to the end. We always look at the heading first and then if the heading is catchy, we study the material in more detail. Here, I am we are going to look at our example and now I would like to uh, ask you to <clears throat> tell me in chat if you if you are willing to read this text and uh, what would you do to make it better and to um, make you read it. <clears throat> okay, so you are saying that the, contra the, the contrast is bad, that it's hard to read, that you don't want to read this text. Background makes it hard to read. We need to add more contrast. Image does not work here. Text is not clear. We need to add lighter text color. Uh, points aren't parallel. Okay. The background is bad. Okay, it's hard to see the transparency of image. Uh -huh. We need to make the, the background lighter. We need to change the font color. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think that's enough. I see that uh, you are, so you all want to make, uh, to add more contrast between text and background to make it more readable. And now, um, so that's right, on this slide the background is too dark and the text is uh, uh, very hard to read. So uh, this is building additional obstacles for our students. And our task as course designers is to make sure that students don't have to exert a lot of energy to find and read the information. Now let's see uh, what can be done to improve this slide. Here we simply added contrast to the text and background. The easiest way to create contrast is to use dark text on a light background, just as we have here. Actually, we have some more comments in chat. Okay, I would add a box of a high contrast to lay behind the text. Actually, that's why we, that's what we did. And you are all saying that that's now that is now it is much more clear that it's clear now. Okay, uh, so we are done with this rule and we can move on to the next one. The next rule is the proximity of objects. The main goal of the proximity rule is to add group in, is to group information logically. So it becomes clear where each element belongs. When objects are next to each other, they are perceived as a whole. So uh, when knowing that, let's look at our slide. So here on this slide, we have a man and the word bubble. And they are too far away from each other. And as a result, they are visually disconnected. So that's what I feel about this slide. Please submit your suggestions.
How would this apply? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, now we have a question on design in chat. Can you please answer that? Okay, so let's read some suggestions. Uh, too big, the, the text is too small and spaced out too much. We need to make the balloon and the text smaller. Uh, we need to adjust the line, uh, the line spacing. It does not look like he's talking, right? Uh, the text space should be smaller. Too much spacing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess uh, that's all. You've uh, provided perfect suggestions here. And uh, now let's see uh, what other issues we have here. So actually you did mention this issue in chat and that is a spacing between lines. It's too big and the text is not perceived as an extract. Okay, now let's look at how we fixed this. Here we move the word bubble and the picture of a man closer to each other. Now it's very clear that he's saying these words. And also we, dis we decreased the spacing between lines and now the text looks as a whole. And now it's very clear that the fireman is saying these words. Okay, uh, so I guess this rule is clear and we can look at the next one. Uh, so the next rule is to avoid visual overload. So you need to highlight only the most important elements to avoid visual overload. Let's get straight to our example. All right, that is our slide. It does not look nice at all. So please uh, uh, let me know in chat how you can fix this. Okay, I hope you're not tired. It's perfect that you are active in chat. It's very fun. <laughs> and it's very interesting to see your suggestions. And, and let me read some suggestions. Most of you say that we need to uh, get rid of underline and italics. We need to simplify the text. Uh, the bullet points are inconsistent. Uh, we don't need italics again. There is too much text variety. We need to use symbols instead of hand-drawn items. We need to simplify it. Mm -hmm. The bullet style does not match tone. Okay, and we need to move the submit. Mm -hmm. We need to let we need to add less text and add an image. Less text, okay. The, the style does not match previous slides. Okay, we can't tell uh, which answer is right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I guess that. Uh, all right, we can move on to discussing this slide. Uh, you've provided some great suggestions here and uh, you are correct. Uh, here we have too many attributes applied to the text. The text is bold, it's italic, and it is also underlined. The element on the slide becomes very heavy visually. And also I have another very important tip. Underlined text usually indicates a hyperlink. So it's better not to use it on a plain text at all, because most students will want to click on it to open a link. And here we don't have any link. All right, now let's look at how we fixed the slide. On this slide, we deleted unnecessary text attributes, and now it looks cleaner. We don't have to highlight quiz answers because they are already indicated by the radio buttons. Okay. We are, let's move on. We are done with uh, this rule. And the next rule is given to be aligning the text to the left. And this is actually our last but not least rule for today. And uh, let's look at our examples. So here I have a slide where the text is centered. Uh, when we center the large paragraph, lines begin in different places and it slows reading speed greatly. 
Now I would like you to try to read this text for half a minute and let me know in chat how do you feel about reading that. I will also try to read it and I will tell you how is it going here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are saying it's hard to read, right. Mm -hmm. So did you have a chance to read the text? Uh -huh. Okay, so you suggest that we need to align it to the left, right. And everyone, everybody is saying that it was hard. Right, also, uh, yeah, lots of jumping around while reading it. Uh, yes, that's exactly what I feel when I try to read this text. Uh, all the time I have to start a new line in it. We, the line starts in a new place and I have to search for the beginning of the next line. Uh, that is not the best feeling when I read the text and take the course. Now let's look at our uh, second example. And here we have the text aligned to the width. You will see that we have additional gaps between words. Uh, the thing is that a gap means a stop. These gaps are causing a student to interrupt reading where it's not intended. Now I'm going to give you another half a minute to try to read this text with gaps. And uh, we will see uh, if it's easy for you to read it or not. I will also try to read now. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that it's too spread out, does not flow as well? Different size text is not needed. Mm -hmm. Text too close to is it to the image? Aha, uh -huh, I see. So, uh, so judging by your comments, uh, you, it was hard for you to read this text, and uh, that's right. I feel the same. It's also very hard to read for me. And here I have another tip. Uh, aligning to the bits is mostly used for printed documents. So that is not the best idea uh, for the course design. Here we have an opportunity to align text to the left. All right, and finally, let's look at this slide with the text aligned to the left. And now we, when we have something to compare with, try to read it and see how, and tell me how it feels. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, text with the correct alignment. Okay, the, uh, Steve is saying that it's much better, right? Yeah, you sent some doubt. Yeah, so now it looks, so now it is much more natural for our eye to read it. And we don't have to stop and uh, we are not distract, distracted to gaps or uh, jumping lines. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's, that was it. Actually, that was our uh, last rule for today. We covered all tips that we prepared for you today and now we are going to sum up what we've learned and make up a recipe for a perfect e-learning course design. So uh, first, we need to make sure that composition on a slide is unified. We need to use widescreen slide size. Then we need to follow the rule of thirds. We need to observe the hierarchy of elements. And also we need to add air to the slide. Now let's speak about typography. So we need to keep correct typography in mind when we create our courses. So uh, make sure to use no more than two fonts on no more than two fonts. Add contrast. 
Check the proximity of objects. Avoid visual overload and align text to the left. All right, so this is our recipe that I mentioned, uh, the rules that you need to follow when you create your e-learning courses. I hope that they will be useful for you and you will be able to apply them uh, to your future projects and make the life of your students easier and make them love your courses and uh, study with joy. Okay, uh, so we are done with the main part of our webinar and we are ready to start the Q&A session. And we have a couple of questions. There is a question from Wesley. Can you share some tips between trainer-led decks that are going to be presented versus self-paced e-learning decks? In just a second, uh, can, can I find it? Um... Mm -hmm. I was able to find it. So, uh, is your question regarding uh, the uh, self-paced courses and courses that are led by a trainer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, it depends on the task of your training. I would use um, self-paced for uh, courses for the topics that are, I would say, um, like instructions or something that is well known in your company, that are the rules that everyone fo already follows, you can put this information into self-paced e-learning decks. And for something completely new and something that is um, that would be hard for a student to understand, I would recommend to have a trainer uh, to help the students. And actually, uh, in our iSpring Learn Elements, uh, there is a great feature to contact an expert and even if you have uh, the self-paced course where students just take courses one by one uh, you can set it up so that um, so that students can contact an expert on this course and ask questions regarding this so sometimes it's very important to have somebody who will be able to answer questions and also, I think that self-paced e-learning decks are good for adults because uh, adults often don't have time to study and they need to learn something while they are on a bus. <laughs> and they can definitely do that from the mobile phone with the course that consists of videos and slides that they can watch and then, um, and then use it and practice it right away. We have a question from Ron. Please explain your navigation button versus the iSpring navigation when you publish the course. Hmm. I see. So now I'm going to stop my uh, presentation and I will show you the iSpring. So I'm going to open iSpring Suite and here I want to show you uh, the <clears throat> example of the player in iSpring Suite and you will see the difference. I'm going to use the presentation that uh, we learned today so that we use today to discuss our tips and tricks. So you can use uh, player buttons uh, if you don't want to add extra elements to your slides, but if you are planning to publish the presentation without the player, uh, just um, so you don't want to have the ice cream player, then you will have to add uh, PowerPoint buttons. You, you will need to do that with shapes or images, plus add hyperlinks to these buttons so that they can take you to the next slide. So I, I would say that iSpring Player is more convenient because it has uh, different features that allow you to control the presentation. Uh, you can add a progress bar here, you can add a play and pause buttons, you can add a volume control button, and also you can limit the navigation to, uh, for example, you can set it to limit it so that your students don't skip anything important and view the whole uh, slide bar. So yes, as for me, I would uh, use Ice Cream Player, but sometimes for projects like mini games, uh, it's, uh, so the PowerPoint version will also look nice. And actually we have uh, a series of webinars, PowerPoint versus Ice Cream, where we show um, 
some some very interesting courses created in PowerPoint and then uh, the versions created in iSpring. We have it on our YouTube channel, which is called iSpring, if you're interested in creating mini games and uh, interactive quizzes, you can check it up and you will see um, the difference between iSpring and PowerPoint. In, uh, so you will see the full picture. <laughs> okay. I hope I answered the question. We also have the question from Laura. Would you show how to display grid lines? And right, that is uh, what I promised. And of course, I will show you. So to show the grid lines, you need to go to view. And here you can click on grid lines. Uh, you will see uh, these um, dots appear along the slide. And it's very easy to use them to make sure that your elements are all aligned and uh, take the correct, uh, so, and take the correct part. You can also click on guides and move these lines around. You can set up all you need to align your so to align your objects. And what is very nice, see here I have an ice cream icon. I put the guidelines. And when I move on to the next slide, I can make sure my ice cream icon fits is in the same position as I have here. See? It's very helpful when you create course design. And as for the ruler, it's very nice to, to use too. You can uh, check the exact position where you place the elements. So as for thirds of the grid lines, they don't show uh, the thirds, but you can set these help lines to thirds. If you enable the rule, the ruler, and then put it like this here, uh, that will uh, stay enabled for your whole project and for your other projects. You need to adjust it once, and then you can uh, use it. And we have question from Carl. Carlos, I often have trouble with the positioning of the titles. If they are more than one line long, I get into trouble. Any recommendations on that? Okay, so actually I do meet the same issue sometimes. Um, usually I uh, try to make the text of the title shorter because I um, don't like when the um, so when the size of the title is different on slides. So I, I would say that it's a mistake to uh, put uh, the title on one slide with one text size and then make the uh, slide that make the size of the slide title on the next slide smaller to fit your text into one line. So uh, if you are going to, if you know that you're going to have a lot of um, titles that take more than one line, I would recommend doing something like this. Uh, you need to make sure that you have enough space uh, to add your uh, text. Uh, I think that is a good idea for the titles. And uh, as for the if, as for the another tip, as for the other tip, the best thing is to make the title shorter you always so it it only seems that it's impossible to make the text shorter but if you try and if you uh, think how to do that you will definitely uh, succeed and make your text clear and uh, short and also um ed is elaborate about Sigel's book uh you're referring to Kevin Single, yes, we have a webinar with him. I have a link on that. And of course, we totally recommended this book because it's about ice cream <laughs> and how you can work in our amazing authoring tool. And speaking about ice cream, uh, we have uh, uh great content library that is full of slide templates and um, if you use iSpring Suite Max you will have access to the whole collection of slide templates 
and on this slide, uh, the text, the titles, the bullets, everything is perfectly aligned and the design already looks great. You can use uh, any of these slides and you can uh, set up full courses using that. For example, if I click on this one, you will see that you already have all sorts of slides for, uh, that can serve different purposes where you can add different information. And uh, Carlos is asking, what about the copyrights for the images in those slides? All of these images are created by iSpring. And uh, if you have iSpring Suite Max, you can use these images in your courses. Thank you very much. And unfortunately, we don't have enough time to cover more questions. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming today again and spending that valuable hour with us. And I hope you have enjoyed our today's session. Bye and have a great day. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, I enjoyed this webinar a lot and I hope you too. I hope that these uh, tips will help you to build uh, great projects. Have a great day. Goodbye. See you.